This is a quick video to announce that I have completed work on my Textile Generator version 2. This is actually huge for me because I've been working on this full time for about 3 or 4 months and this is pretty much the reason why you haven't been seeing me on YouTube during that time. I've literally been spending the past months just looking at fibers and textiles and pies and just thinking about how can I represent all of that mathematically. I think it's safe to say that this is probably the hardest thing I have ever done in CG. And you can say that I have invested my soul into this. And so just to be clear with everyone, this is not an AI tool. Before going any further, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has bought version 1 of the textile generator when it came out last year. It's your contribution that allowed me to take 3 or 4 months aside just to work on version 2. And that's why I'm releasing version 2 as a free upgrade to everyone who has bought version 1. As a quick reminder, the textile generator is an SPSAR file that needs to be loaded through a separate program called Substance Player that is a free download that you can get off of Adobe's website. The textile generator generates textures such as albedo, normal, or height map that you can use afterward in your preferred software. And now, let me give you a breakdown of all of the new features. The most impactful change is the addition of plies and fibers, and I've exposed a whole range of options to control these that will really allow you to create very unique and interesting looking textiles. You can change the ply count for both the weft and the warp threads individually, as well as control the amount of twisting that happens. You can even modify the size and the albedo value for each single ply. Then we have the fibers and this very useful switch here that will allow you to turn the fibers on or off. The frizz and kink parameters for the fibers simply allow us to add more or less disorder to each of these fibers. Yarn and fibers are typically spun in either a Z or S configuration, which roughly translates to either clockwise or counterclockwise. For a balanced yarn, it's typically recommended to keep the fiber twist to be the opposite of what is the ply twist. But of course, there are types of yarn where both the ply twist and the fiber twist are the same. So experimenting here will give you some very interesting results. Just like for the plies, we have also a twist value here that we can modify for the fibers that controls how much twist is imparted to the fibers as opposed to the plies. And the random offset value here allows us to add even more disorder to our fibers and also start to blend together the different fibers of the different plies that we have. The weft and the warp fibers can be controlled individually. And you'll also find an extra tab here for flyaways, which as the name implies are fibers that simply have even more of an amplitude and allow us to create some very organic, very interesting looking textiles. If you want to create some very wispy looking fabrics, go within your fibers tab and turn off the cores for both the weft and the warp. Cores are simply a solid base that is added underneath the fibers to prevent there from being visible gaps, but sometimes that's what we actually want. And then lower the fiber density for both the weft and the warp, and you'll wind up with a very wispy looking textile. In the color tab, you'll find all the controls to modify the albedo values for both the weft and the warp threads. The color mode here allows us to either have one global color or to have an individual color for each ply. And on top of that, you can even use the custom map here to load an external texture to control the color of each weft or warp threads individually, allowing you to create interesting textured patterns. The thread color variation and fiber color variations allow you to further modify the albedo values of your threads. Fibers and plies aren't the only thing that I have added to version 2 of the textile generator. Under fabric, you'll find a weave type dropdown that will allow you to switch from plain to twill to satin, chevron, herringbone, basket weave that all can be modified through different parameters. And if that's not enough, you can load now a custom weave map that will allow you to specify a black and white texture that will allow you to control the interlacing between the weft and the warp fibers. So the custom weave map allows you to load in your own weave type. And on top of that, you also find now an overlay mask 
Oppose usage is a little bit similar to the custom weave map, but this one is added on top of the weave type that you will have specified. Under threads, you'll find a whole range of new options here as well. The roundness parameter here allows you to flatten your individual yarn threads. Parting allows you to spread the yarn threads at the intersections. Intersection size allows us to either widen or flatten the threads where there are intersections between the weft and the warp threads. Slubs, knots, and gaps are very similar to how they worked in version 1 of the textile generator. Knots are used to be called intersection, but I think that the word knots now is more appropriate. And you'll find a first pass here on knit fabrics. On top of that, I have added a whole lot of presets that you can use as a starting point to create your own textiles, or to just use straight up. You can absolutely generate your own presets and save them for later use. I'll link a separate video that I have created in the past that shows how to save and load presets in Substance Player if you want more details on that. So the textile generator version 2 is available now on algang.studio for purchase. And there's also a single project commercial license that is available for those of you who are working on big commercial games or VFX productions. It has a very special way to mark the occasion. You can get 50% off the price of the personal license to the textile generator up until March 6th. If you do work for either a game or a VFX company and you'd like to either buy perpetual use rights or if you'd like to even get access to the source code to the generator, get in contact with me directly and we'll work something out. And if you ever encounter bugs, if you have questions, if you have suggestions for features, or if you just want to give me feedback, get in contact with me because I really would love to hear about you. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you next time.